All right, so let's get started. Like I said, we are prompt. It's right at six o'clock. And if you're joining us, uh, first of all, we want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us once again. If you're a frequent user of these webinars, this is actually the fourth webinar. Um, as you know, this is a series of informational presentations that are designed specifically for UNE's newest students and families, we want to welcome you. We hope that we're able to get a lot of your questions answered. I just want to emphasize, as I always do in the beginning of these webinars, we're also available for one-on-one -on -one appointments. If you have specific issues that you want to discuss with our office, um, please know that you can um, give our office a call and schedule a call um, or a meeting, excuse me. We're service-oriented. Um, our unit is always um, we welcome any contact from you. We work really hard to personalize this experience. You know, we understand that this is a, a very um, uh, different experience for every family, and we're here to guide you and help create a balanced approach to the investment that you're making. Um, we hope that you get a lot out of tonight's presentation and um, will join us for our last webinar. So I just want to start again by introducing myself. Um, my name is Ann Nelson. I'm one of our associate directors. I work with our tuition planning team and our student service team. Um, we have a new participant, Karen Barrows. She is our bursar of student accounts. She is the expert on all things related to student accounts. I wanted to get some administrative information out of the way. We have a lot of participants. We, we looked at our registered participants. There were about 170. So I think what Karen and I are going to do is we're going to present, I'll be driving the presentation, Karen's going to go over, like I said, the billing information, and we'll reserve time at the end for the Q&A. Um, we want to keep these sessions to around 30 minutes, but again, we know that with this one, um, we're probably going to go over a little bit. And just like all of our other recordings or webinars, just remember, we will post a link like past webinars on our website. It's une.edu, and it's a forward slash tutorials with an S on the end. Um, we'll also, um, you know, um, we'll also be able to um, send you a, a link if you want that. Tip, uh, recordings are typically available within two to three days. Um, I did get a question about closed captioning. I haven't yet encountered that. So I, I think I have an ability to um, save the recording and with it, with closed captioning. If that is your question, why don't you email our office, sfs at une.edu, and um, it'll go directly to me and I'll see what I can do in terms of converting it with the closed captioning. So thank you for that question. There is a way to do it. Um, like I said, I think all of us are Zoom experts at this point, so I, I do know there's a way to do that. So I'm going to start by going over the agenda here. Um, in this presentation, the goal here is to basically review really a lot of the topics that we covered throughout the spring. If you remember back in March, we just started with, you know, um, analyzing the financial aid letters. So we, we've all come a long way. And the, the main objective here is to get you to the final steps to the August 1st um, bill due date. We'll talk about how we communicate to students. It's really important to talk to your son or daughter about the importance of, of keeping track of communication. I will go over authorizations because those are, are key to understanding your ability to view and be a participant in the billing process. Um, Karen will go over a bill, what it looks like. I'm sure most of you have it. Um, we'll also discuss health insurance. That's one of our most frequently asked questions this time of year, what it is, why, why it's on the bill. Um, payment methods. And then I'll review a little bit of work study. Just know too that in the next several weeks, we're going to be communicating mostly by email to students about a lot of this information. So just know that we, we will cover a lot tonight, um, but we will continue to speak to your student via email. So the summer timeline, I think is important. I just want to make sure that we all have a good sense of what to expect over the next couple of months. You know, now that hopefully I think graduations are, are um, completed, you know, this is really the fun time, um, the time to enjoy um, these summer months. But of course, um, to talk about financial aid and, and our timeline, the bills were released on June 7th. Um, July 1st is the date where students can complete the insurance waiver process. That process is actually just going online um, to a separate website, inputting your information from your health insurance card 
to show that you have adequate insurance. And again, Karen will cover you know, what the insurance means and why we have that. Um, from a housing perspective, July 15 is the housing um, deadline. So students get their assignments on July 15th. August 1st, the 2021 fall bills are due. Um, August 21st, you, you know, believe it or not, students move in and classes start on August 25th. Um, you know, I, I like to look ahead and, and it's probably scary to think that um, we're, we're talking about the FAFSA, but we really need to mention that the 2022-23 FAFSA opens on October 1st. Spring bills will be mailed or released to students sometime in I believe it's mid to late November um, with bills due um, before the start of classes in January. So let's go over the fall startup guide. I wanna mention this was mailed with your bill, but I will give you the link if either it didn't come in your bill or you've lost it, that, that happens, life is busy. Um, there is a link and you can print that and use that as your, your checklist. So what are the highlights of, of this startup guide? I, I think this is a really well put together guide. I don't see a lot of schools that provide really such detailed information and the online version has clickable links. So it makes it a lot easier. One of the things we talk about in that startup guide are loan requirements. If your son or daughter has accepted their federal direct loans, they actually have to do two additional steps for that loan to be finalized. And that is to go to studentaid.gov and to complete what's called entrance counseling. That's a 20 minute session. Um, and they have to sign the uh, master promissory note. Um, scholarship letters. This is phenomenal news for those students who receive an outside scholarship please send that notification, copy it, and scan a copy to sfs at une.edu. This way we can notate their account. Um, once again, waiving and enrolling health insurance, that process begins July 1st. Um, make your payment or start you know, loan applications. Karen, again, will go over that, but we really encourage you right now to complete or you know, start your loan process and get a loan application completed so we can certify it. And then we'll talk about how we authorize non-student users. And so here's our handy um, link. So une.edu and it's a forward slash UG, which is for undergrad, so UG startup guide. So let's talk about timely information, but mostly you know, how we communicate to students. Really, if you can um, emphasize to your son or daughter, really they should set up their UNE email account and, and get into the habit of checking it and using it on a regular basis. Emails that are sent from our office should be viewed as soon as possible. We make every attempt to send really timely, relevant information to students. And, you know, really, this is how every department within the university is going to communicate with your son or daughter, whether it's their academic advisor or housing or the registrar's office. So just a good habit to get into um, and they can start right now. This is what the U online portal, a little screenshot of that, what it looks like. You know, every school has an online portal. Ours is called U online um, and students will access that. And, and on their U online, not only is it financial aid information, but also course registration will take place there. Parents do not have access to that portal. However, through U online, your, your son or daughter can then give you access to TouchNet. And we'll cover that um, portal in, in just a minute. So I want to talk about three separate authorizations because we'll, we'll discuss this. And, and again, at orientation, um, FERPA is a big one. So let me just review the three that are really needed. And, and that's another screenshot of what a, a student will see when they, they log into their U online portal. FERPA, the acronym stands for the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Students can complete that authorization form on their U online account. It's under the requirements section. What FERPA requires, what the federal government decided was that if a student wanted to share financial information with parents, regardless of their age at the time of enrollment, um, I get that question a lot if they're 17, they still have to complete this. They want to complete this form. Um, it'll ask them for the name of the individual they're giving the authorization to, and then what the last four digits of their social security number is. And then when you call, we'll ask you for that identifying information to make sure that you're an authorized user. If it's not completed, really, it's no problem. You can text your son or daughter, 
have them complete it. We can even check it while you're on the phone. And then, you know, in due time, we can check it in, you know, live, but you want to make sure you, you have them when they're not in class or, or uh, busy, but we can, we can get it done. So know that they have time to complete this. We just want to remind you as early as possible, you know, to get that done. So the other uh, authorization that we talk about is as an authorized user, um, authorized users are individuals who have access to the TouchNet billing portal. So TouchNet is the name of our portal. Students can go to that authorization first through you online, and they're going to go to student financial services. They select student accounts, and then when they click on manage my bill, it will bring them to the online portal. This is the second screen that they will see. And as you can see, what the screen or what the Authorization is asking the student is, do you want the student to have access to billing, um, your payment history? So this is again, the parents portal. And the nice thing is we've added the 1098T tax statement. So authorized users can access this form. This is a wonderful feature. And, and most of us are using an online billing um, portal um, at some point. So this will not be anything that's uh, something that you haven't seen before. So the third authorization is called Title IV authorization. The way that I can describe Title IV is, Title IV is the name of financial aid um, or any funding that comes from the federal government. And that includes anything like those direct loans, a Parent PLUS loan, your federal Pell Grant. Um, and what that authorization requires a student to do is if there's a non-educational charge on the student, student's account, and a perfect example would be health insurance. That's not related to education. The only charges are tuition, room and board, and fees. When the student authorizes or approves the Title IV funding, what that means is they give us authorization to cover any non-educational expense. Most students authorize us just because that makes it easier. If you have any questions, the link on the screen will explain that in more detail. Um, but again, call us or email us if you have any questions about that, that authorization. So I'm gonna turn the presentation now over to Karen because what she's gonna do is kind of analyze the bill. There are some nice um, uh, animations here. So I'm gonna turn it over to Karen and uh, here she is. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I did want to point out that the students and authorized users last week did receive an email communication about viewing the bill online. So I do want to stress there's a lot of information in that email. Um, so if you haven't received it, just touch base with your student and they can forward that too if you are not already an authorized user. So on the bill, as you can see at the top, is the student's ID number and the bill due date. The student ID number is very important when you communicate with our office, whether it's via email or phone. So if you could have that handy, that would be really helpful in us pulling up the student's account right away um, so that we can assist you and answer your questions. The next section of the bill, of course, is your tuition and fees. So you have your tuition, room and board charges, your general service fee, and your health insurance charge. So the room and board fee is, that's a placeholder on the account right now until the student's assignments come through in July. And then once that happens, that charge will come off and then the new charge will come on dependent on what room assignment your student does receive. Then we have the general service fee and the health insurance charge. Of course, that will stay on the account if your student does waive it it will show on the credit portion of your bill. So the charge obviously will stay there. And like I said, the credit will offset that charge if your student does waive it. Then we also have the authorized financial aid, which includes any funding, which is either UNE scholarships or loans for which requirements have been completed. Again, if the student has not completed those loan requirements, it will not show on the bill right now. And we do ask students to take care of that as Anne mentioned earlier. The next section would be the memo item section, which shows additional credits which are expected to pay the bill. These funds are anticipated and have just not been received yet, such as the case of loans, which will disperse after the first two weeks of the semester, once schedules are solidified. 
The link to waive the health insurance, in case we didn't mention it earlier, is in the email communication that the students and authorized users received last Monday, and that's une.edu slash health insurance. So if you need any um, help finding that, just reach out to us. And here's the page to um, waive the health insurance charge. As you can see, it's pretty self-explanatory. The coverage for undergrads is from July 1st through next August. So that's important to know if you are enrolling, you do have a full year of coverage. The bill, um, you will see every fall, you will see the charge for the student health insurance. So waiving it this year is just a, you know, just for this year, every July students should waive the health insurance. We do encourage them to do that prior to the bill due date of August 1st, just to ensure that the charge does come off by the bill due date. Other credits that you will see on the bill, you have, um, you have the gift aid. So there's two different types of credits that you might see. First, you have the UNE scholarships, which are either based on academics or financial, e, a, financial need, excuse me, determined by the FAFSA. You may have been awarded federal or state grants if you qualify through the FAFSA. Also, you may have sent in scholarship notifications and they are reflected on the bill. There's the self-help, which includes direct payments or loans, either through the federal government or through private lenders. Again, those are alternative loans. Depending on your financial situation, you can use a combination of payment options to cover any remaining balance. An example might be you have an out-of-pocket balance of $10,000. Your student might get an alternative loan for $5,000, and a parent might set up a payment plan for the remaining $5,000, or they might get a parent plus loan. So if there's a way to just do a combination of your payment options, every family situation is different. So we encourage you to sit down, look at your options and then make a decision on what best meets your needs. When applying for any loans, whether it's the alternative loans or parent plus loans, we recommend that you apply for the full year and then the loan will be split between the fall and spring semester. So if you do get a loan, you won't have to think about it when the spring bill is due because you'll already have applied for it. We also encourage students to work during the summer or on breaks to not only help pay for the college, um, but for also to develop a healthy resume. And we encourage the college, um, we know that it's a big investment and we're doing all we can to encourage students to keep their debt as low as possible. Working during the summer could also help pay for, you know, book expenses and other expenses throughout the year. Outside scholarships. So again, we just wanna make sure that if your student um, did receive any kind of scholarship from any organizations that they're sending that information directly to our office. Financial aid does need to take that into account when it comes to financial aid. There are some cases where the student's aid might be reduced. That's obviously dependent on the size of scholarship that the student's receiving. So don't panic. That's you know just not very common that the aid will be reduced, but we just want to point that out. And if you are receiving outside scholarships, remind you to please send those to us again. And if there's a check that's sent to you, please send that to us. You will have to endorse the check if the check is made out to the student and then underneath the student's name, make payable to UNE so that we can um, deposit that please. So here's just a little bit of a combination of how you can look at your payment options on your account. We encourage students and families to make online payments through our secure payment portal through TouchNet. The major credit cards we accept are MasterCard, Visa and Discover and families can also make payments using ACH checking or a savings account. There's no fee to make an online payment and payments are reflected on the account immediately. We offer a monthly payment plan, which we'll talk about in a few slides. And some families will also apply for a parent plus loan or alternative loan, as I just mentioned. If you have a 529 plan, please begin initiating that request by July 1st or so. It can take up to, up to two weeks for our institution to process and send us the payment. You will need to let them know your student's name and ID number so that they can put that on the payment, obviously, so that we can apply it to the right account. You can also mail a check to our university lockbox, box, which is located in Brattleboro, Vermont, and there's a payment coupon on the back of your bill. Please keep in mind if you are mailing a check that it can take a week or more for us to receive and post it to your account. 
And uh, as you can see on the screen is the tuition payment plan section. So this is in TouchNet once your student gets over to the side or if they set you up as an authorized user, this is what you will see when you log in. You can click on the make a payments button at the top or the payment plan button to enroll in the payment plan. You can also view statements. And as Ann mentioned, we also added the feature of the uh, electronic 1098T form, which is an official form. So if your student opts in to receive this, they will not receive a paper form, but you'll have access to this to, for years to come in case you ever lose it. Once you click on enroll in payment plan, you'll see there's two options here. You would select, first of all, you would drop the drop down button for the semester. So you can select the right semester that you're in. As you can see, this says fall 2021. We do have several different populations of students. So the first one is for our comm students. That's a grad program. And the program or the plan that you wanna enroll in is the second one, which says fall 2021, June 1st to November 1st. So that's the plan you would select if you do wanna utilize that. I must mention, we do have quite a number of families that take advantage of enrolling in the plan. There's a $25 enrollment fee and no interest is added on that balance, obviously, if you're making your payments in a timely manner. And then the tuition payment plan, another screen here, it explains about the plan. You can enroll now or you can enroll next month in July. If you enroll in July, enroll in July, you can opt to make a payment at that time or you can wait until August 1st. So we, we opened it up early so that pay, families can spread their payments out over several months. So it's dependent on you know, your financial situation on how and when you wanna sign up for that plan. And then here's just a quick screenshot of, you know, you would click on the payment plan enrollment, you would pay your $25 at the time of the enrollment and then submit your payment. So students who have um, a refund on their, or a credit balance on their account, we will issue a refund to the students. So we start rolling refunds out after the ad drop period. So roughly about late September. We ask students to set up the direct deposit account, which can be any bank account the student sets up. We process refunds each Thursday. And during the beginning of the semester, we do try to process refunds twice a week. We know students are anxious um, for their refunds for expenses. The funds would be deposited within one to three business days versus waiting for a paper check in the mail and then waiting for the bank to make those funds available to the student. So we really do strongly encourage the direct deposit method. This also avoids checks getting lost and needing to be re reissued. If a student doesn't show a credit this semester, we still encourage the students to set this up now. And that way there, if the account ever does reflect a credit at another time, the refund will process by direct deposit. If the student has work study, they would have to select the payroll button. And for the refunds, they will select the accounts payable. So there is two different um, sections that they have to check off. It's on the same page. So if your student is planning to take advantage of the work study program, um, just have them set up their direct deposit at the same time. And we all know about student loan debt. So I would like to just really quickly say that, you know, if your student is receiving a refund and there's a loan on the account, students can email our office and ask that we reduce the loan. And this is obviously after a conversation, you know, with the family to make that decision. They might need part of the refund for expenses. So they don't have to tell, you know, financial aid to reduce everything, or they might want to reduce everything. So again, that's something you have to review together and make that decision based on your individual situations. And now I'm going to turn this back over to Anne to talk about federal work study. All right, Karen, thank you so much. There's so much great information there. I learned something new every time I participate <laughs> in one of these. Um, you know, uh, as Karen mentioned, and I just want to, you know, add to that um, comment she made about you know, your refund, you know, one of the calls that a lot of calls that we take at this time of year are planning with families, you know, looking at the, the, the balance and then projecting or giving them an estimated loan amount so that you can come really close to what you owe without over borrowing. You know, we are conservative in that approach. We don't want students to over borrow, have these large refunds that 
um, of course, summer earnings can, can pay for a lot of those expenses. So let's go into the work study program. I do want to mention we only have a few slides on work study, but please know that um, your student, if they were awarded work study, will again receive a very detailed email, typically in, in early August, about the work study program, the requirements, how to get set up with the app. So again, this is simply an overview. I do want to mention too, if work study was not offered as part of their financial aid package, you can give our office a call. Um, we, we can look at the award package if they, to see if they may qualify. And if they don't qualify, career services can also help that student find non-work study jobs on campus. I know I've mentioned this previously, just remember work study is not deducted from the bill. Um, what students need to do is they do need to complete new hire paperwork. So in you online, they can go in and they want to accept the work study and then it will populate the forms. And I'll go over the forms in, in just a moment. Um, students apply for jobs using an, an app called Handshake. They actually set up you know, a profile with their resume. Typically jobs for the fall tend to be posted around mid-August. And then the last step is they work with their supervisor to get a work study authorization form completed. And what that form does is it, it authorizes a student to participate in the federal work study program. So if your son or daughter has worked previously, none of these uh, forms will look, um, they will look familiar to you. It will be the federal um, withholding form, the state of Maine withholding form, and then lastly, UNE's confidentiality agreement. I do wanna mention um, if you can, do this over the summer, it's really important um, to go over the withholding form because students come to our office sometimes and ask us how to complete that form. We can't give them tax advice. So just um, you know, be available to go over that form with them if they have questions and, and we'll make sure it's signed, but we can't give them tax advice. The, the form that is required to be done in person is a form called the Federal I-9 form. The federal government requires any employee to present in-person um, identification. So if your student has a passport, that will qualify. If they don't have a passport, they will need to bring a copy of their license and their original social security card. So keep in mind, these are their original documents. So we know sometimes uh, families do not want the student to keep a passport at school um, or a social security card. We will be um, at orientation at a table. We'll be able to look at those in person and, and comply with that requirement, but we just want to make sure that you're aware um, before they begin working, we need copies, or excuse me, we need the original documents in order for them to be hired and work on campus. So let's recap uh, the timeline. We're, we're actually getting towards the end, and like I said, Karen and I will go through any of the questions that we have. Um, so as you all know, the bills have been mailed. Um, due date is August 1st. Make sure during this time, students are accepting their aid online. They're completing those loan requirements. You're becoming familiar with TouchNet, maybe setting up your payment plan, getting that work study paperwork printed, and most importantly, really set up direct deposit. We really want to improve our green initiative and we really don't wanna to have to print checks. So it's really important to get that set up. Um, again, just a reminder about the good old FAFSA, as I mentioned earlier, October 1, you can start that um, if you so choose. Um, spring bills will, are mailed and you can then enroll in the spring payment plan during the, the months of November, possibly late November, December. Um, and then spring bills will be due before the start of the term. And I do think that I have a, a little typo in there. I don't, I don't think that that's the actual start of the term. So don't hold me to that date. I'll, I'll make sure I correct that before I post it. And then if you're a returning student, you'll get an email notification. We won't mail a uh, letter to your student. They'll actually um, be paperless and they will get an email saying, your aid is available to be viewed and accepted online. So it's a streamlined process once they're a returning student. If your student was selected for verification, just keep in mind that aid will not be awarded until all the documents are processed. If you have any questions about verification, um, definitely give our office a call. All right, so we're nearing the end. We have one final webinar coming. It's the home stretch to semester startup. I think that's the title that I've, I've selected. We'll go over a lot of this information. 
um, again. And so for those that didn't participate tonight, it will be a, a great refresh and some additional information. Um, please stay in touch with us. As I mentioned, we, we really do welcome um, meeting with you and, and speaking with you on the phone. We have virtual appointments right now, but we are transitioning to on campus. We will be there very soon. But if you have questions and want to set up a phone call or a Zoom meeting, please give our office a call or an email. Um, and we will open it up now to any questions um, that you, you may have. And I just saw two questions and they both related to um, the federal work study IDs that they needed. Mm -hmm. And I know on your slide, it had passport or they need a government issued ID along with the social security card, correct? So students will need if they have, so I'll answer that question too, because I see them coming in. Someone's yeah. asking is, if a student has a passport, that is, that's a sufficient piece of documentation. But if they don't have a passport, there's a list of documents that they can print out on you online. So I hope I'm answering the question. They would need to provide two forms of ID. So a license, so a security card, they could, they could come in with their original birth certificate. Um, someone is asking about the real ID, will a real ID qualify? No, you, a real ID, you still are going to need a second form of identification. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, so I hope that answers the question. Um, let's see what other questions we have. Um, bear with me here. So the link for the startup guide is une.edu forward slash u G start up guide. Um, I want to just go back, Karen, to, to the first question. Someone had asked about closed captioning while the Zoom call was, um, was taking place, and I misunderstood, so I apologize. I will, um, if you contact me, I'll make sure that when I convert the recording, I put on that feature. So if I misunderstood, I, I do apologize. Um, Karen, can you see the q and I think you can. Yes, I've been answering some of them. Oh, good. So I do. Okay. I did okay, good. quite a few, so I'm trying right, to respond as quickly. Perfect. Um, so someone is asking, they do not have any tuition on their bill. The student needs to connect with their academic advisor to sign up for classes. So that's why you're not seeing any tuition. So you, you do need to have them connect with their advisor to get their course selection um, completed. Uh, let's see, what other questions we have? Um, Yes, you can accept the work study and then decide not to work on campus. Exactly. Yep, that's good. All right, let's see what other questions we have. They don't show the uh, sub and unsub loans, and the reason could be because the they haven't completed their requirements for that. Yeah, if you don't see any aid, you need to go to the, it's called Terms and Conditions. It's a tab, I believe it's the fourth tab over. Um, I just did this with my son, so I know. You want to um, scroll down, accept, and then go to the Student Financial Services tab, and then the award, click on the right here, and then the loans will be there. And if you did enroll in the payment plan already, and you have the health insurance charge, and, and then you waive it, the payment plan will recalculate, and then it will reduce the remaining payments if you've already made a payment. Okay, let's see. Uh, we bill by semester. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to chip away at these. We bill by semester. I know you receive your financial aid award and it's for the full year, but the bill that you received is just for the fall semester. And then late fall, you'll receive a bill for the spring semester. All right, Karen, thank you. So uh, a question is, what is the $300 general service fee? So the general service fee is $700. Um, and that fee covers a multitude of different expenses. Um, I, I'll, I'll name just a few. It covers your orientation. So we're not going to bill you for orientation. Laundry, clubs, activities, graduation, transcript requests. So the general service fee, rather than bill out separate fees for labs or studios that the university decided quite a, a while ago, more than five, six years ago, to create a general services fee. And I think it really streamlines the, the billing process. If I didn't mention it already, a student can have more than one authorized user. So let's just say there's, um, you know, several parents involved or grandparents, um, you can set them up 
just and give them access just to view and make a payment on the account. So I just wanted to point that out just because it might avoid somebody having to mail in a check um, where they can pay, make a payment online. All right, thank you, Karen. And yes, the question is, will we have a table at those pre-orientation? Those are the mini sessions that are taking place uh, the two Fridays, uh, this Friday and the following, and then in July, yes, we will be there. Um, and we will, um, you know, those were meant to be small group. We'll have just a few people at our table. They, they did try to keep them smaller um, to, to comply with COVID as we know it's ever changing, but yes, we will have a table there and please come over and visit us. We'll have our laptops so we can look at your student's account if you have a quick question. If, and, if you did, oh, I'm sorry, Ann. No, go if, ahead, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> if you accepted the unsubsidized and subsidized loans and then decide you do not need them anymore, yes, please email financial aid. I don't think you can go back in there and decline them once you accept them, correct, Ann? So if they've declined them, yes, they have to send an email. We need something in writing. Just have your students say, um, can you please, you know, um, I would like to accept my loans. I, you know, inadvertently. No, this vice, it's actually opposite of oh. that. They, are, they accepted them and now they don't want them because if they accept them, then it's going to pay. So they do need yep. to notify us. Yes, yep. they do. Thank Correct. You. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's Sorry. okay. It's usually the other way around. So. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> so there's a good, this is a good question. And with so many people on the call, I'm so glad that Tammy has asked this question. We paid a $500 deposit, but why is there only a $300 oh, yeah. credit? Because $300 is credited towards the fall bill, $200 is retained by housing as a security deposit. It is released when the student leaves student housing. So that's why you're seeing just a credit of $300 rather than $500. And if it makes a difference, you know, when you're calculating your loan amount, if you are to the penny, just remember that your spring bill will not have that one credit. I, I just want to mention that if you're someone who's a real stickler for um, for the details and, and want to get that loan, you know, real um, real precise. Um, so uh, let's see what are the questions we have. Um, please call us or email us if you want to make an appointment. We can do that during the day. We have Wednesday evenings, but they are booked out next week. So don't hesitate, really give our office a call. We are, this time of year is, is really our busiest time. And I would say, you know, I am the parent too of three current undergraduates. So I, I'm living your world right now and they're all at three different schools. So I'm, I'm in different, you know, looking at their accounts and making sure really call the office. There's no hold, you're not gonna get voicemail. Um, we have a full staff that works in a call center you know, because we, you know, a call center, but they're, they're in the office and they are there to answer your call. So, you know, if something is urgent and you really want that question answered, give our, give our office a call. The number of hours for work study, that's dependent on your student's schedule and honestly, how much, how many hours they want to work and the department's needs. It's a kind of a combination. I mean, we're not expecting a student to work 40 hours a week. I think, you know, it's, I think it's pretty much what 10 to maybe 20. Do you think 20 is even reasonable? And that's a, yeah, Karen, that's a good, a good point. Think of it this way, um, the way, you know, our minimum wage in the state of Maine is $12 an hour. That's phenomenal. If this, our maximum federal work study is $3,000 for the year. So you can kind of do the math. It typically works out to eight to 10 hours. You know, most of that income is in tax. This is a great opportunity for students to have, you know, money deposited on a regular basis, building a resume, getting recommendations for jobs, you know, when they, you know, by the time they're a junior, you know, they're building a LinkedIn profile. If they've worked during school, they, they have the ability to create this phenomenal LinkedIn profile. That's our goal. We want to educate, you know, your student, but we obviously want them to get jobs and, and do that. So you're, you're right, Karen, works to about eight to 10 hours a week. Supervisors work with students all the time. They know the academics are the first priority. The work study is, is it comes after. Someone is asking, sorry, go ahead, Karen. Yeah, and I was going to ask you if you could answer Emily's question real quick about IT and granting access to the UNE email. Yeah, um, Emily, I, if you've made your deposit in April and you haven't gotten any communication, I, I would first start with admissions. Just make sure you're coded correctly. And, and I would also really um, 
sit down with your son or daughter and see if they've received any communication. Um, um, it seems unusual that you, I don't, it sounds like you haven't gotten any emails, whether it, it's from our office. So um, I would, um, once a student is deposited, they, they should be able to set up their, um, their accounts. I would want to add, there's a really, um, if you want, Emily, there's a link if you want to write this down. It's une.edu forward slash new student instructions with an S on the end. You click on that link, that's a description of how they um, access Okta. Okta is, um, so that's how they can access Okta. It can be a little clunky in the beginning because it's a two-factor authentication system. So um, if you try that link, if they're still having issues, they, there's a phone number for IT. They'll wanna talk to your student though. They won't talk to parents. So just make sure it's a time when your son or daughter you know, is at home and has some time to speak to IT. I hope that helps. I'm not uh, sure. Just, sorry, oh. Karen, go ahead. I'm sorry, Ann. I didn't know what Holly's question when was regarding the date for the Friday in July. Yeah, I think Holly you might be referring to um, the dates of those July mini sessions. Okay. You know, um, there's two dates in July. I also want to give you guys another link. Um, I do believe those Fridays, Holly, are July 16th and July 23rd. Keep in mind, student affairs they they kind of drive that that whole um, initiative, if you will, to orient and to get your student onboarded. So. Um, another important link, and you've probably been there, but I, I would want to repeat it. It's une.edu forward slash new nor'easters with an S on the end. Um, check that out because that's constantly being updated. So I hope that helps, Holly. I think those dates are on there as well. I think that we have answered most of our questions, Karen. Um, I think so. I'm pretty sure we have. Obviously, you can call or email us. This is our, you know, it's really our super busy time, but we will respond to you um, in the order that we receive those questions and emails. All right, perfect. Well, again, everyone, we, we got you right under 45 minutes. I hope you join me for the last one. Um, we're looking forward to um, the fall. It's going to be a, um, an in-person experience. We're all looking forward to it. Um, and we hope to meet you um, right before move in. And again, if you have questions, please let us know. We're, we're going to thank you again for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great evening, everyone.